who said GMOs are safe, when the, the active uh, gene in DT modification, cry protein 1B, are not being recovered from fetal and maternal blood, who said it's safe? Genetically modified organisms that we are referring to here in Nigeria are transgenic. That means genes are exported from other organisms across species barriers into organisms that they were not supposed to be there. What they have and what the world has presented to us as genetically modified food is cooked bomb that will blow when you take it. Food can be a weapon and it's a weapon. He who controls your food can control your society. He who controls your seed can control the life and control the earth. Yeah. It's happening quietly, but it's seismic across the continent of Africa, from the rich volcanic soils of Ethiopia to the vast plains of Nigeria and the savannas of Burkina Faso, a new kind of revolution is growing literally. For decades, Africa has been told what to plant, how to farm, and whose seeds to trust, U.S. corporations. Through billion-dollar agricultural aid programs, flooded African markets with genetically modified seeds, promising record harvests and modern farming. But what they didn't say. Those seeds came with invisible chains licensing contracts that banned farmers from replanting, patented genes that made traditional crops obsolete, and chemicals that farmers were forced to buy season after season. Now, in 2025, something historic just happened. African nations are rejecting U.S. seeds altogether. In what? Experts are calling the Great Agricultural Uprising. 18 African countries have quietly agreed to phase out American GMO imports and replace them with homegrown seed banks built by Africans for Africans. Washington didn't see this coming, but it's shaking the foundations of a multi-billion dollar agricultural empire. Welcome to stories that redefine Africa's destiny. And today we're diving deep into how Africa's rejection of U.S. seeds marks the start of a new chapter, the secret agricultural revolution. For over 40 years, the United States through agribusiness giants like Monsanto now Bayer, Corteva and Cargill has dominated Africa's seed market. They came dressed as saviors, with slogans like Feed the Future and Seeds of Hope. But behind those smiles were contracts that changed everything. Farmers across Ghana, Kenya, and Zambia soon discovered they couldn't save or exchange their seeds. Each planting season required them to buy again from the same corporations at triple the price. If they didn't comply, legal threats, crop seizures, even government pressure followed. In essence, Africa's oldest farming tradition, the ability to save your own seed was outlawed in favor of foreign innovation. And yet, what started as a technological promise became a tool of economic control, as American and European companies patented seed after. Seed, Africa's food sovereignty slipped away, the soil was African, the rain was African, but the food system? Completely foreign-owned. By 2022, things began to shift. Scientists in Uganda and Mali noticed something alarming. GMO crops were degrading local biodiversity. Soil fertility was declining. Pest resistance was rising, and the fertilizers needed to support these seeds were becoming more expensive due to the global energy crisis. Farmers began asking hard questions. Why are we importing seeds when our ancestors cultivated hundreds of resilient local varieties, millet, sorghum, phonio, and teff that thrived without chemical dependence? Then came the wake-up call. In Burkina Faso, cotton farmers who once embraced U.S.-engineered BT cotton turned against it. Their complaint? The fiber quality had dropped, exports had fallen, and traditional cotton was proving more profitable when Captain Ibrahim's government took charge. One of their first moves was bold, ban foreign seed dependency and launch national seed banks to preserve local varieties. Soon, Mali, Chad, and Niger followed suit. By mid-2024, ECOWAS ministers quietly met in Ouagadougou to discuss something unthinkable a decade ago a Pan-African Agricultural Independence Charter. Their mission, rebuild the continent's food system using African genetics, African innovation, and African land. In Washington, this movement didn't go unnoticed. When African nations stopped renewing seed import licenses, American lobby groups began to panic. Billions in export deals were suddenly at risk. Behind closed doors, agriculture lobbies pressed the State Department, arguing that Africa was falling under the influence of anti-Western agricultural ideologies. Translation? Africa was simply becoming self-reliant. But that self-reliance threatened a U.S. agro-industrial system that made over $11 billion annually from African seed and fertilizer sales. Then came the shocker. In August 2025, reports leaked that the African Union had officially endorsed the creation of the African Sovereign Seed Bank, a collective institution designed to protect the continent's crop genetics from foreign patent claims. For the first time, African seeds would be stored, replicated, and distributed without Western 
involvement, to Washington, that was a direct hit to their influence, to Africa, it was liberation. From Tanzania to Senegal, young African scientists are now developing hybrid crops not GMO but bioadapted, meaning they blend traditional genetics with modern techniques while keeping ownership entirely African. In Kenya, the Green Roots Initiative is empowering women farmers with drought-resistant maize that doesn't he rely on, imported fertilizer. In Nigeria, local biotech firms are using CRISPR to enhance indigenous yams' resistance to disease without altering their genetic ownership. And in Burkina Faso, the most revolutionary project of all has begun, a national seed sovereignty center that teaches farmers how to multiply, preserve, and trade native seeds legally without corporate oversight. Every seed grown there is tagged property of the people. Think about that. For centuries, Africa's wealth was extracted from gold to oil to cocoa. Now the continent is reclaiming its most fundamental resource, life itself. If Africa controls its own seeds, it controls its own food supply, and if it controls its food supply, it controls its economic destiny. That terrifies Washington not because Africa is doing anything wrong, but because it's doing something different. Western agriculture depends on African markets. Without them, corporate profits shrink. But beyond economics, something deeper is shifting the narrative. For the first time in modern history, Africa isn't waiting for handouts, grants, or aid. It's rewriting the rules of development. This movement has already inspired partnerships with BRICS nations, especially India and Brazil, who are helping African labs develop open-source genetic mapping tools. So when American news outlets say, Africa is turning away from modern agriculture, they're missing the point. Africa isn't rejecting science, it's rejecting dependency. It's choosing innovation rooted in culture, ecology, and sovereignty. It's 2030. African farmers are planting native rice varieties that outproduce American hybrids without chemicals, without contracts, without debt. Local cooperatives are exporting organic produce to global markets labeled 100 African Seed Origin. Children in rural villages are learning agricultural science not from foreign NGOs but from African agronomists who speak their language and understand their soil. And across the continent, food prices stabilize, poverty declines, and the dream of food independence becomes reality. That's not a fantasy. That's the direction Africa is heading if it stays united, focused, and proud of its agricultural identity. The world expected Africa to remain the testing ground for Western agritech. Instead, it became the birthplace of a new revolution, quiet, green, and unstoppable. So the next time someone asks, did Africa just reject U.S. seeds? The answer is yes. But more importantly, Africa just planted something far greater, the seed of freedom. This is a Frick vibe news, where every headline hides a deeper truth. And Africa's future is no longer imported, it's homegrown. It was a story Washington didn't expect, but it's far from over because now the revolution has entered its second stage, the fight for food sovereignty. In this part, we'll uncover how U.S. agro-corporations, European lobbyists, and even global NGOs are trying to reclaim influence over Africa's soil. And how African farmers, scientists, and leaders are pushing back harder than ever before. This is the inside story of Africa's agricultural rebellion, the one rewriting the global balance of power, one harvest at a time. When African nations began banning GMO imports, Washington responded with quiet aggression. Behind the scenes, U.S. diplomats warned that such moves could strain trade relations and reduce foreign aid. Eligibility, in plain language, that meant play by our rules or lose funding. But this time, African leaders didn't flinch. Mali's agriculture minister publicly declared, Our soil is not a laboratory for foreign experiments. It is the inheritance of our ancestors and the promise of our children. Similar statements echoed in Burkina Faso, Senegal, and Tanzania. In response, global corporations began to rebrand. Monsanto became Bayer Africa, Doubt Apont, split into smaller entities to disguise their presence. And NGOs funded by Western donors started new seed assistance programs with softer names Climate Smart Agriculture, Green Partnerships, Food Security Projects. But the goal remained the same, regain entry into Africa's seed vault, while African nations focused on physical seeds, Washington launched a new front digital. Control. Through data sharing programs and genetic mapping projects, American research firms began collecting African crop DNA under the banner of scientific collaboration. But hidden in the fine print was a dangerous clause, ownership rights. If U.S. labs mapped and cataloged an African seed, they could file for an international patent. On its genetic structure, meaning Africa could lose control over its own crops again, just this time through digital law. That's when the African Union intervened. 
In early 2025, AU officials, led by Ethiopia and Burkina Faso, introduced the Pan-African Genetic Data Sovereignty Act and Mark regulation that banned foreign patents on indigenous crops and required all research involving African genetics to be stored within the continent. It was a bold move and it sent shockwaves through. Western biotech circles, one Washington analyst told Reuters anonymously, If Africa controls its genetic data, it will control future food technology. That's a geopolitical earthquake. He was right. Because food in the 21st century isn't just about survival, it's about power. While the political battles raged in conference rooms, something even more powerful was unfolding in the villages, across. Ghana's northern region, smallholder farmers formed cooperatives called seed freedom circles. Each circle collects traditional seeds, maize, cowpea, millet, and shares them among members free of charge. No patents, no middlemen, no corporate contracts. In Kenya's Rift Valley, local farmers began experimenting with biocomposting and organic pest control, rediscovering forgotten African agricultural wisdom that predates colonial times. In Nigeria's Kaduna state, youth led startups are building open source saps that let farmers track seed performance and share knowledge peer to peer, bypassing foreign controlled databases entirely. And in Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim. E's government introduced the One Seed, One Nation campaign, a bold initiative that offers grants to farmers who plant and reproduce indigenous seeds at scale. The message is clear Africa is no longer begging for technology, it is building its own. While Washington was busy lobbying, another partnership was quietly blooming between Africa and BRICS nations. India's agricultural universities have signed deals to help African countries develop low-cost, patent-free hybrid seeds. Russia is offering fertilizer technology without ownership strings attached. China is funding biotechnological infrastructure, including solar-powered irrigation systems and climate-resilient seed labs. And Brazil is sharing its open-source genetic mapping tools for free. Together, they're creating what experts now call the South-South Food Corridor. It's not about ideology, it's about independence. Africa, long seen as a dependent food importer, is transforming into the new breadbasket of the Global South, and that's changing everything from global trade routes to diplomatic alliances. As Africa's agricultural independence gained ground, Western media shifted tactics. Major outlets began publishing articles warning of food insecurity and risks to productivity if African nations abandon Western technology. Some headlines claimed African crops would fail without GMO support, but on the ground the opposite was happening. In Senegal, yields of native millet rose 40% under organic. Soil management. In Ethiopia, coffee farmers reported record profits after switching back to traditional Arabica seeds. In Burkina Faso, cotton quality improved so dramatically that local textile exports jumped 30% in one year. So why the fear narrative? Because success stories threaten the established order. If Africa proves it can feed itself and profit from it, then the era of dependency is over. And Washington's agribusiness lobby knows it. Let's make this clear. This isn't just about seeds. It's about freedom, knowledge, and control. For over half a century, the world treated Africa as a market, not a partner. But today, Africa is rising not as a buyer but as a builder. By controlling its agricultural genetics, it controls its economy. By mastering its soil, it commands its destiny. And by uniting across borders, it breaks the last invisible chain of colonialism, the seed monopoly, as Tanzanian activist Nyeri Kihara said during the 2025 African Agro Forum. We may borrow technology, but we will never again borrow permission to feed ourselves. That statement has become the rallying cry of Africa's new generation scientists, farmers, entrepreneurs who see agriculture not just as survival, but as a weapon of liberation. Of course, challenges remain, climate change continues to threaten. Rainfall patterns, infrastructure gaps slow distribution, and some elites still prefer foreign aid over local investment. But the difference now is mindset. The days when foreign corporations dictated what Africa could grow are fading fast. Now nations are funding soil research, water preservation, and regional trade systems designed around African crops, not imported ones. Even more groundbreaking, the African Development Bank just launched a 10 billion homegrown harvest fund to invest solely in indigenous agriculture projects, from Lagos to Kigali, from Bamako to Addis Ababa, a new slogan is spreading across farmlands. No seed, no freedom. So, did Africa really reject U.S. seeds? Yes. But that's just the beginning. Africa rejected a system one that sold dependency disguised as development.
And in its place, it planted something revolutionary, self-trust. The soil of Africa is speaking again, and this time it speaks in its own voice. No patents, no permissions, no apologies. This isn't just about farming, it's about freedom. And the world is finally watching Africa rise not as the hungry continent, but as the continent that feeds itself, its people, and its pride. As the dust settles over this quiet but powerful revolution, one truth stands unshakable. Africa has finally taken ownership of its destiny. For generations, the continent's soil was treated as a testing ground its farmers as subjects, its seeds as commodities. But now that same soil has become the battlefield for sovereignty. What started as a rejection of U.S. seeds has grown into something much bigger, a continental awakening across Africa. The rhythm of the hoe and the heartbeat of the land are once again in sync. Farmers are rediscovering what colonial systems tried to erase, that Africa's strength was never in imported technology, it was always in its roots, its people, and its will to survive. From the highlands of Ethiopia to the plains of Burkina Faso, every seed planted today is more than a crop, it's a declaration of independence. It says, we will not rent our future, we will grow it. And while Washington scrambles to understand how it lost control, Africa is building something far greater than profits it's cultivating. Pride, peace, and power. This isn't the end of a story, it's the first chapter of a new era. An era where African farmers are not clients of foreign corporations, but guardians of the world's oldest and richest agricultural heritage. An era where food is no longer a weapon, but a right. So, the next time someone tells you Africa is rising, remember it's not. Just in skyscrapers or tech hubs. It's rising in the soil, in the seeds, and in the spirit of a continent that has finally said, no more dependency. Africa's greatest revolution didn't start with a gun. It started with a seed.